What's up, guys? My name is Andrew. This is Vince. We are on the investments. Today, we're going to talk about why cash is trash. So, there's two major reasons why cash is trash, especially right now. So, the first one is inflation. Okay. So, right now, they're printing money like crazy. But in general, what the feds always try to do is they try to maintain the inflation rate at 2%. So they're going to instill policies and do whatever they got to do to make sure it's 2% or at least close to that. Sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. So what that basically means is, is if you have $100 today, within a year, it's going to be worth $98. And it just continues to decline every single day that you keep it under your mattress. It just is what it is. If you have cash in your pocket, you're literally losing value on it every second of every day. And so now Vince is going to go in depth on why cash is trash due to inflation. Go ahead and take it away. Yeah. So as Andrew just explained, you know, every year you're losing 2% of your money. So your buying power of money goes down by 2% every year. So let's say you have 100 bucks. So in 10 years, you just lost, what, 20%, right? So the same $100, you can only buy $80 worth of goods from the market 10 years from now. So if you were hiding your money under your mattress for 10 years saying that, hey, you know, I got a 0.01% interest rate from my Chase Bank, it's the best, you just lost so much money. So another reason I'll explain why is, let's say if you wanted to buy real estate, for example, every year because of inflation, the value goes up, right? So since you're on the negative side, which means you're not doing anything with your money, so the price value of your house, everything keeps going up. And if you don't take part in this transaction, 10 years down the lane, you just lost so much value of the money. So the same $80 you have now, you can only buy $80 of real estate, right? But it's not even that much, it's actually worse. Because of inflation, the price of real estate goes up. So now every year, the 2% went up, so it went up to $120. So now you're negative 40. So it's like really bad. So you don't wanna be on this side. So now, you know, the second point, Andrew's gonna talk about, you know, assets and wealth. Yeah, so it, the second reason why cash is trash is because you're simply not building wealth. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put that here. So, not building wealth. And let's just be honest, I think everyone wants to build wealth, to have some income, to have freedom, to have um, you know, something to maybe pass down to their kids or maybe just to have something that provides cash flow so they can buy their kids the shoes or whatever it is for school. So um, with assets, if you are investing in assets such as stocks, bonds, and more namely real estate, um, you're going to now start to hedge not only against that inflation, but if you buy right, you can actually earn money over inflation. And so let's say you were investing in some, I don't know, some random stock and it paid you 6%, right? When you pulled it out, you made 6%. Well, really you made 4% because of the inflation rate, of course. And then stocks are great. Bonds are okay if you're, if you're getting older, they're a safer bet. But real estate is really where it's at, and that's what's got us super excited about uh, making this video, as we're trying to tell you why specifically assets are amazing and real estate is our favorite. Vince, tell them why. Yeah, so like Andrew said, you can always invest in stocks, it's easy. Hopefully you have a, a 401k program or something with your company where your company matches it. So you want to do at least that. You could do the Roth 401k, you know, that builds you some kind of wealth. You could do about $6,000 here. But these uh, kind of investing misses one major point, which is actually leverage, which you can use in real estate. So in real estate, you can actually have $25 and buy something for $100. So you borrow the money from the bank, right? So when you borrow the money from the bank, right now interest rates are like two to 3%, which pretty much means the banks will loan you money for free. That's what, if you write the inflation, right? So what happens is, so you buy the property, let's say you buy the property, um, and then this is time, and then this is, um, this is value of the house, right? So your mortgage, um, your mortgage payment, this is, this is gonna be a mortgage payment, right? So even at the beginning, your mortgage payment is always gonna uh, stay the same. So this is year one, this is year 30, right? So the mortgage payment is the same. However, because of inflation, the rent always goes up. So let's say the rent is here, but in 30 years from now, rent is gonna be here. So if it started at like 1,000 bucks, in 30 years, it's gonna be like $2,500 in rent, right? But your mortgage payment is the same. So you're just making all that money. So if you invest in real estate, it's one of the uh, common like things you could do to hedge yourself against uh, inflation. So other benefits include, you know, you can shelter your money, you have uh, 
So some of the benefits include tax benefits, right? So if you get uh, money from real estate, it's not taxed the same way like my W-2 income. Let's say I make $100,000, about 30 to 40K, you know, maybe 30K goes to the government, right? But I do have real estate. So what I could do is I can write $25,000 off my other job, right? So that's one benefit. Um, and then you can always, the equity goes up, right? So you have equity because somebody else is paying your mortgage, so that's good. So you have equity. And then what else do we have? We have um, appreciation, which is, you know, uh, your value of your property goes up with inflation, right? So when you come to this other side of the equation, this inflation is now really good for us. So we have like a million dollars in real estate. So every year, 2%, we're getting like 20 grand for free, right? That's what that means. So you're hiding your million dollars under your ma uh, blanket and you're losing $20,000. Whereas we on the other side, we go take our money and dump it in real estate and our money grows. So that's like the difference. And obviously the last part is cash flow, right? So after all this, you can also make cash flow from real estate. So there's different ways to calculate that. A very common is cash on cash ROI, which is cash on cash return on investment which means you put $100 in, how much do you get back per year, right? So if you put 100 bucks in, um, you know, you're getting back, you know, let's say you get 10 bucks, so you get a 10% ROI. But uh, one common thing uh, people miss out is if you, so we say that the uh, inflation, let's say for, for appreciation for real estate, let's just keep it bare minimum, 2%, let's say, right? Averaged like about three to 5%, depending on your market. Let's say it's only 2%, it's, in, uh, it's going up every year. So. I told you that $25 buys you $100 of real estate, right? So that's four times, but this went up by 2%, right? But you only put $25 in. So what is that? That's like two times four, that's like 8%. You just made 8% just on appreciation because of leverage from the bank. So it's like all kinds of crazy things you could do with real estate. So to wrap, basically, either you can swim against the current or with the current. Going against the current is hiding your money in a mattress while it loses money every single second of the day. Or you go with the current and play the game as it is already set up with the feds maintaining inflation rate of around 2%. And you can actually now leverage that and enjoy the, and ride literally the wave of inflation. Every time things go up, we are stoked because now we make more money because we are leveraging our money in real estate and we do that with investors as well who get involved with us everybody wins and every time that inflation goes up we are excited not bummed out because we're going with the current